Hey guys, so I know I've been a bit uh, inactive lately in all regards related to booktube. I haven't been making videos, I haven't really been commenting on other people's videos that much, and I haven't really been commenting back on my videos that much. I've just been sort of out of it with the whole YouTube thing recently. I haven't been doing as much as I would like to, and I'm hoping that it'll change in this upcoming month and for the rest of the year. Um, I've just been kind of focusing on other things, and I feel like I'm ready to devote a lot more time to booktube again, so I'm filming a bunch of videos today. Hopefully they all go well. The first one I'm doing is this video, is the subject tag. Um, I was tagged to do this by Jen from Today in Jen's Library. Um, this is actually a tag I was going to do anyway, but then she tagged me to do it. The reason I want to do this tag, a lot of tags haven't been really appealing to me lately. That's why I haven't, had, haven't done any of them really that I've been tagged to do. I just kind of got tired of talking about the same books all the time, the different tags that I was doing. That's what it felt like I was doing. It felt really boring to make the videos and it felt really boring to edit them. And I felt like they were really boring to watch. So instead, I'm going to be doing this tag, not necessarily the correct way to do it, but I'm going to be doing it with only books that I have not read yet. Well, at least for the most part. You've seen most of these books, I think, or probably all of them, in hauls in the past year or so, but uh, none of them I've read before. And so, basically, this tag, there are different subjects, like school subjects, and then you choose a book for each subject. And I thought that would be a really easy way to choose books that I've never really talked about much before in books because they're books I've never read before. The first one is Math, and that's crime novel. I guess I don't really, this is the only one that I'm kind of like, why are these two things related to each other? But I guess crime, calculation, math, I guess it kind of works, but whatever. Um, they had to choose something for math, so I guess that makes sense. The one that I'm choosing for this one is the only one that doesn't necessarily fall into the books I haven't read category because I'm reading it right now. I just started, I'm only on like chapter three right now, but it's Red Seas and Red Skies. I'm doing a buddy read for this with um, Lindsay and Sarah and Sana, and it's really good so far. Basically, for this series, in this series, the main characters are thieves, so it definitely is surrounding crime and pulling off heists and crimes. I love the first book. This book so far is really good. It seems like it's setting up a bunch of different things, including some different thieving heist crime stuff, and it's quite a lot of fun. And I love seeing them attempt to pull off these great crimes. And then the second one, the second subject is science, which can be either science fiction or fantasy, and I chose fantasy. Um, this is, I'm going to show you a classic fantasy series, and it is the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, the Unbeliever. This is the first trilogy in that series. Um, it is Lord Fowl's Bane, the Iliath War, and the Power That Preserves. Um, this series in particular, um, I didn't know much about it when it was sent to me. Um, it's just, it sounds really interesting. There's actually a video um, where Brandon Sanderson is going over in this classroom. He's teaching a class about fantasy and he's kind of going over the different uh, topics of fantasy, like different uh, subgenres within fantasy. And he very briefly talks about this uh, series. And the way he describes it makes it sound really interesting. And I read a little bit more about it online after I watched that video and f decided that I really wanted to read it really, really soon because it sounds really cool. Basically, Thomas Covenant kind of finds himself in this Narnia-like situation where he falls into this fantasy world, but he doesn't believe that it's real, and that is why he kind of dubs himself to be the unbeliever, and throughout the series he's kind of trying to figure out whether he's just crazy or whether or not this world is that he's in is real, and at the beginning of the series, the very beginning of the first book, he does this really despicable thing at the beginning when he falls into this fantasy world because he doesn't believe it's real and it kind of haunts him throughout the rest of the series and basically it just sounds really interesting like a really cool idea it's supposed to be kind of dark and I'm definitely interested in seeing where it goes the third subject is English Lit which is a choose a classic novel and this is one that's been sitting on my shelf for so many years and I have not ever read it but I really want to it's Catch-22 by Joseph Heller and this, I really, really want to read this. I started reading it once. For some reason, I couldn't really get into it. That was several years ago, though. This, I've had this for, like, over five years now, I think. I've had it since I, 
at the beginning of college probably, um, and I've been wanting to read it since then, I just haven't. I'm hopefully going to try to read it very soon. I know several people that really like it, whose opinions I trust, and it's supposed to be really funny, it's supposed to be really poignant, and have a lot of satirical value to it, and I just really want to read it. It's one of those classics that just seems like it would really appeal to me, particularly. The next subject is art, and that is choose a beautiful cover, and I went with a cover that I find to be beautiful, but also a book in general that I find to be sort of like a work of art, um, and that is Only Revolutions by Mark C. Danielewski. After reading House of Leaves, which he also wrote, I bought this because I wanted to see what something else he wrote was like. This book is just fucking crazy in general. You can see, okay, so there's this eye on this side, there's a different eye on this side, and then you can see these two things popping out. There's two different uh, little bookmark things in each side, and they both they go different directions because the book goes two different directions, and inside is just a whole bunch of craziness happening where you have to read back and forth, like flip the book over a bunch of times and keep reading back and forth, and then also, beautiful cover-wise, when you open up the book, it's got all these words, and like the green side has this going on, and I'm just going to take the book jacket off. The yellow side has this going on, and then the cover without the dust jacket is this really nice nature -y kind of thing. And I love books that do this, like print stuff, images like this onto the hardcover. And I honestly might just read this without the book jacket on it, um, just because it might make it easier. Book jacket is one of those book jackets that kind of feels like it falls off too easily, um, but other than that, it's really cool. And yeah, I'm honestly kind of putting this one off a little bit just because of how crazy it is, and I kind of I know I'm gonna have to devote some time to it to really get it. It doesn't have nearly the reviews, the good reviews that House of Leaves does. It doesn't have nearly the amount of recommendation that House of Leaves does. People generally don't like it very much. I guess we'll find out if I like it at some point. Next subject is history, and you're supposed to choose a historical fiction book, and I choose All the Light We Cannot See. I just bought this pretty recently. Um, I saw it in a bookstore and thought the cover was amazing, and I have no idea what it was. It was like in uh, Books a Million, and it was like the CEO or someone high up in Books a Million like recommends it, like it was in that kind of section at the beginning of the store, like our so-and-so recommends this book and I just saw the cover and it looked beautiful and I wanted it so I got it. And then people started talking about it a lot and apparently it's really good and I love historical fiction books that take place during World War II. It's one of my favorite periods to read about. Um, and this book is about a blind girl, a blind little girl from Paris and a young boy that is in the Hitler Youth and how their stories come together eventually. That's really all I know about it. That's honestly all I really want to know about it before I go into it. I kind of want to go in just going in without knowing way too much. Um, I watched a few reviews on it so I, I do know a little bit more than that but I, in general I don't know a whole lot and I just kind of want to keep it that way and I'm really excited to read this one. I'm probably going to read this either in, in October or November because this is one that I just it's high up in my mental list of books that I want to read very soon. The next subject is languages, so you're supposed to choose a book that has been translated to English. So I chose Victor Hugo's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. This story is one of my favorite stories. I love the Disney movie version, it's my favorite Disney movie. I know they're very different, you don't have to tell me they're very different, I know that already. Uh, I already know some of the things that were changed, um, kind of, some kind of big spoilers of the book, but I also don't know a lot of other things, I'm assuming. so. I'm really hoping to read this very soon because, like I said, it is one of my favorite stories in a general way. I don't know the whole story, but in a general way it's one of my favorite stories and I really want to read it very soon. The last subject is Geography, which is a book that has that does not take place in the US or the UK. So I chose Deathless by Catherine M. Valente. I'm pretty sure this doesn't take place in the US. I'm pretty sure it takes place in Russia. I know it's about, it has the general feel of Russian folklore and it involves Russian stories in a way um, and so I'm pretty sure it would be set in Russia. Honestly don't know that for sure but I chose it anyway because it's really the only one I could have chosen on my shelf that I haven't read yet. So yeah, this is one I also want to read very soon. I might actually read this in October. I'm not sure 
but the praise that I've heard for this has just been overwhelming and I want to read it and see what I think of it. I think I'm going to really like it a lot. I read like the first few pages of it when I first bought it and the writing is beautiful and I really think I'll really be able to get into it. So that's the end of that tag. Thank you guys so much for watching. I might do more tags at some point, the ones that I've been tagged to do. Uh, I guess we'll see. I know I'm going to be doing other videos very soon and hopefully you'll see those within the next few days as well and uh, hopefully I'll be more active in October. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you very soon with more. Oh yeah, and I got a haircut, as if you didn't notice.